Now over to something very important when it comes to essay writing, and that's sources. Remember that citations and quotes in your essay always add weight to your argument. So for instance, if you're writing about the death penalty, um, it might be wise to get uh, a quote or two to support your statement. However, and here is the key, you always have to cite and give us your sources, uh, both with direct quotes, of course, but also with paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means citing very specific information or ideas that you have found, but even if you do it in your own words, you have to give your source if the ideas are someone else's. So citations and quotes add weight to your argument. However, and this is the key, always create your own text, both content and structure. So when you get an essay assignment, don't use the internet to find out what to write. Sit down and just create your own text. That's always the safest uh, way to go. Now, having said that, I'm going to talk about sources and I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about evaluating sources and citing sources. Let's start with evaluating sources and I'm going to keep my focus to the internet because that's where uh, the dangerous sources are. The number one rule is to be very critical always and to not trust the information that you find. Always check reliability. Um, the first thing you do is that you notice the source, the page. Is this a trustworthy page? Is it even objective? Then you look for author and contact information. Who has written this? Is the author qualified? Why has the author written this? And is there contact information? Because if there's not, it might be dubious because serious authors usually leave their contact information. And the next thing to check is the date. Is the page updated? Is this new and relevant information? And the third thing that you have to do is you always have to corroborate the information, especially if the information is dramatic or spectacular. To corroborate means that you double check the information with other pages. See if you can find the same information at some very trustworthy site. So whenever you decide to use sources on the internet, you want to be critical, you want to check reliability and corroborate the information. Now a little bit about citing sources. If you want more information on citation styles, look up the MLA style on the internet. But here is what you do. You cite uh, your sources in your text, especially if you're quoting or paraphrasing. So you always give your source in your text after direct quotes. You don't give all the information, you're very brief here, and you use brackets, pretty much like this. You see here that in order to add credibility, the author has wanted to use an Obama quote. And this is what you do. You just write the work, Audacity of Hope, page 92. And then you give more specific information, more detailed information at the end. Always after the text, you give references and sources. Here you list all your sources, but only published ones. Um, it's not a good idea to give your uncle as a source if he said something during dinner, because the purpose of giving sources is that the reader should be able to check it up. You also want to give very detailed information, pretty much like this. What you see here is that you have the author first, then the name of the published work, the book in this case, and then the publisher and the year of the publication. This is an internet source. Obama, on December 15th, he wrote a text on the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. This text can be found at whitehouse.gov. And this is important. You always have to tell when your text was retrieved, when you downloaded it. So here it was retrieved on March 22nd, 2011. So with web sources, you give the name of the author, the title of the article, the web page, and the date when you got the article. So all in all, you always give your sources, both in your text and after the text. Now, students very often get worried. They ask me, do I have to show sources with everything I say? What if I just learned or remembered something? Well, then it's not a problem. 
Use commonly known information without citing sources and without worry. The key to remember is if you wrote it yourself and you created the text, you don't have to worry at all. But if you refer to very controversial views or to spectacular or very specific facts, uh, you need to show sources because then it is obvious that you picked it up somewhere. The only reason we ask for sources is so that we can avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism means the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. So if you copy someone else's work, even though it's just a word or two, you will fail your exam and in higher education you'll get expelled, so you don't want to do that. So then I'll end where I started. Citations and quotes really add weight to your arguments. It's really good to use quotes if you need a backup for what you're saying. And you have to be critical and always cite your sources. However, and that's my key point, always create your own text, both content and structure. The key to success is to always create your own draft and your own text.